Yo, what is going on my YouTube people? 29 United back here with another video and in today's video, we're gonna continue with this theme of World Cup videos and I'm gonna be discussing on how well the German national team do in the FIFA World Cup. I did a video on Canada. I was very similar to this quite recently. So if you guys haven't checked that out, go ahead and do so and come back and watch this one. Before starting this video, if you guys are new to the channel, please make sure to smash that subscribe button. We are very close to three times subscribers. All of my links, my social links will be down in the description. My Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and my Discord are all down. Click on that, go follow. And if you can smash a good 20 likes for this video, that would mean a lot for me and the channel. So smash that subscribe button. So in the Canada video, I did mention that these videos, these type of videos where I talk about a certain nation is gonna be split into two chapters. The first chapter, we're gonna be talking about the qualification process. And number two, we're gonna talk about the players themselves on just how well they can perform at this World Cup. If we start with Germany's qualification process, I think it's quite simple to say that they had a very successful World Cup qualifiers. I mean, they didn't have the best of opponents, However, they did struggle against one particular one, and that was North Macedonia in a game where they lost 2-1. I believe it was a goal scored by Gundogan for Germany, and an 85-minute winner for North Macedonia was scored by Elmas. And I saw that game live, actually, and I was very surprised. And there was this little glimpse of hope that North Macedonia might actually make it far and maybe quite possibly qualify for the World Cup. I think that was the first glimpse of hope that people saw from them during very, very well in that qualification process. But Germany topped off the group with 27 points. They were just miles clear of the rest. And you can say the qualification process, like I said, was quite easy and simple. Not much to say about the qualification process, but you gotta realize this is the first qualification process under the new manager, Hansi Flick. And he did very well. And he pretty much smashed every opponent except for that one game that you can call that a blip in that little qualification process but these things happen to a lot of teams no matter where you are in the world so it is what it is but at the end they got there and that is that for the German national team in terms of the qualification process. You've also got to realize that it was a very good way for Hansi Flick to try out new players. We got to see players that we've never seen before in a German lineup. Players like David Raum, for example, now plays for Leipzig, who had a very successful season last season with Hoffenheim. He's a, just an example of a player that was never really introduced in that team, but got his chance and actually proved himself quite well. And we saw a lot of players that weren't respectively that great with their club, but did stand out with the German national team. Notably, my favorite player, Kai Havertz, who was kind of eh with Ch Chelsea last season, if I do say so myself. There's like Gundogan shined very well under Andy Flick, and I think Gundogan is gonna be a crucial part in that German lineup, but we're gonna come to the players in just a little bit. Going back to the qualification process, it's just really a group that Germany should have topped, which they did, very easy. They got to experiment with their players, they got to try new tactics, new formations, all of that. Simple as that. So overall, it was just a very easy, very productive qualifiers. And in qualifiers, usually it's it's not a period where you should be testing new players per se. You've got to take it seriously, but you know, Germany, with the amount of talent they have, they've pulled it off and they came winners at the end. All right, so now we're going to be heading over to the World Cup group itself and the players. So they're actually in Group E alongside with Spain, Costa Rica, and Japan. A very tough group. Some people would call it the group of death. Now, in my World Cup prediction video, which, by the way, if you haven't checked it out, you know, you should probably go check that out. Anyways, like I was saying, I predicted Spain and Germany to go through and each or one of them are going to be first or second. It doesn't really matter. And I think that's what the majority of people are going to go for here. I think people are going to expect Germany and Spain to go through, whereas Costa Rica and Japan are going to put one hell of a fight. And it's a group that can shock the world, to be honest. Japan can do well. So is Costa Rica. We've seen them do it in the past. You never know with the World Cup, and that's the beauty of it. But I think bringing up the Spanish national team is actually a very, very interesting opponent to have because Spain and Germany are teams that have been struggling in the past World Cup and they just haven't really found their form. In 2018, Germany was last in their group after an abysmal performance. Spain made it to the round of 16 but fell short to Russia in a penalty shootout, which was a brilliant match, by the way. And I think since then, they've started to kind of rebuild. And something that I can link between the two national teams 
is this the amount of talent slash young players that they have now this video is not necessarily about spain i'm not going to go too much about them but in spain you've got players like pedri and all that whereas for germany you know we've got the likes of Havertz starting to perform really well for the national team you've got jamal musiala florian Wirtz, Haim adiyemi nico schlotterbeck the list goes on there's just so many german talent coming up the ranks and they're now taking positions of the old timers you know Mats Hummels not really used that much anymore I think it's nice to see that German talent coming up starting and they're doing very well like I said Nico Schotterbeck had a fantastic season with Freiburg in the Bundesliga and it's just a question of if they can carry that experience over to the World Cup we're just gonna have to wait and see Kaim Adeyemi another player that has been fantastic for Salzburg in the Austrian Bundesliga now has joined Dortmund likewise with Schotterbeck they're now teammates and again it's i mean obviously adiyemi is very is a very young player when i say they're going to bring that experience i'm not necessarily talking about tens of years of experience but adiyemi very sneaky player he's probably not going to be a starter but a player that i have in mind again is players like havertz musiala verts they are young players that do have the possibility to start in this world cup squad this younger generation do they have what it takes to go all the way in qatar to be honest germany is one of the favorites they've always been one of the favorites to win the world cup in every single tournament they've qualified for and i think a lot of people are going to disregard this year's World Cup for them simply because, like I said, they have too much young talent. They're probably not going to have that much experience. But Anzi Flick is very good with young players. And I think that's a huge advantage that they can have over uh, the other teams in the group. A Japan team that has a lot of raw talent, a lot of young talent, but simply hasn't really been able to use it that much, especially in the qualifying. There's been a lot of weird selections with the lineup. Costa Rica, a team that I haven't really watched much of, but I know haven't been that great either. They actually kind of barely made it to the World Cup. And in Spain, again, like I said, very similar to Germany, is a team that have a lot of young talent, such as Pedri, Gavi, all those players, who have been really great. And the manager will probably is in a similar position as Anzi Flick is with Germany. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think Germany is going to go ahead and maybe win the whole thing? Are they going to go far? Or is it going to be a repeat of the 2014 World Cup? You never know with the World Cup. I'm making this video right now. And you just simply never know. They can go ahead and crash out of the World Cup just like they did in 2018. And no matter how much I praise their talents and their young players, it can also be a huge possibility. But like I said, I still think they're going to make it past their group stage easily i think they're gonna beat japan costa rica i think they can even beat spain but spain is a very tricky team hansi flick if he knows how to use his players correctly i think he will bring germany to victory and i want germany to win the world cup i don't think it's gonna happen i think it's gonna be very tough there's a lot of good teams in this world cup yeah that's gonna be the end of this video let me know what you guys think. Do you guys agree with the points I've made, with the group selections, with the players that I've talked about? Would you talk about another player? Put them in the comment section down below or on Twitter. I would love to discuss with you guys. And yeah, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. Join all my socials. All of them are down in the description. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Damn, I'm already learned. Else you went up in the dirt, man. I don't wanna